let's assume we have a different uh, a different uh, array factor. Previously, we did this array factor, but now let's assume we have z plus one all cubed. And now uh, let's try to determine, find n, and uh, find a n's. Okay, so let's try to determine all of these, and uh, let's also find what are the nulls. Or when you say what are the nulls, we are asking. What are what are the angles? Of course, this is clear. What are the angles where uh, we're going to get zero radiated power in a specific uh, direction? So, regarding this uh, this array factor, all we need to do is that initially, so this is the question, but uh, for this one, we should get uh, we can find that the AF. AF is equal to Z cube plus 3Z squared plus 3Z plus 1. Okay, so uh, this is what we observe, and uh, it looks like we can uh, we can determine that uh, all the, the coefficients here we have A1, this is A2, A3, and A4, and uh, this is the previous example, okay? Now, this polynomial, the polynomial, it's in third order in Z, so we may, to some degree, easily imply that the n is equal to 4. Now, if n is equal to 4, the excitation coefficients, they are expected to be something like this. A1 is 1, A2 is 3, A3 is 3, and A4 is 1. So this is going to be expected, the excitation coefficients. Now, if these are the excitation coefficients, then the next uh, step, we need to determine what are the, the nulls. But when we calculate the nulls, we are going to assume that uh, d is equal to lambda over 2. Okay. So if we consider lambda uh, d equal to lambda over 2, then we may need to check what is KD. KD is going to be 2 pi over lambda times lambda over 2. So this is equal to pi. Then uh, we have KD cosine theta plus beta. And let's see uh, if we, I'm going to assign any theta here. Uh, let's assume beta equal to zero. So this is going to be pi cosine theta. Now, if this is pi cosine theta, in order to determine the, the nulls, we are we will expect that uh, z plus one all cube is equal to zero. Now, these nulls they happen when z equal to minus one and minus one. It is equal to e to the power j times uh, n pi. And n can be 1, 3, 5, and so on. And uh, z, it is equal to e to the power j, kd cosine theta plus beta, e to the power j, this is pi cosine theta. And this is equal to. Uh, e to the power j and pi. Now we should equal these two arguments. So then for n equal to 1, we, we get that uh, this implies that pi is equal to pi cosine theta. So then cosine theta is equal to, uh, what is this, 1? And cosine theta equal to 1, that means that theta is equal to 0. But then we can also, let's think for a moment, uh, this one, z equal to minus 1, it can be found, uh, wait a second. 
This is this can also be something like this, but I'm not sure if, if this will be uh, any useful. By the way, is this correct? This is correct, right? Yeah. This can also be the following. Z equal to minus one. This can be Z. It can be So this minus one, it is both e to the power j times pi, which is this angle, but we can also find this one for e to the power j minus pi, okay? So both of these two are equal to minus one. Uh, so in order to scan all the space, we can say here that e to the power minus j pi, wait a second, no. No, this doesn't have a minus, this is j pi cosine theta. This is equal to the e to the power minus j pi. Okay, that is better. Uh, and this is slightly different from the previous case because we are considering the second uh, uh, case. Then we get here uh, minus pi is equal to pi cosine theta. This means that cosine theta is equal to minus 1, and cosine theta equal to minus 1, that means that theta is equal to 180 degrees. So apparently, we can have an antenna with four elements with these exact excitation coefficients that have this array factor, and it's going to have a null uh, at theta equal to 0, so there will be a null here, and one null here. When we see that, and actually the middle of this antenna is here. So we know that the null here, this means this. So for some direction, so it will be uh, diverged from this specific direction, it will progress like this, okay? So this means that so far we found uh, these two nulls. And uh, do we have any other null? So let's check, actually this was for n equal to 1. Let's try for a moment when n here is equal to 3. If n is equal to 3, we are going to observe that uh, e to the power j pi cosine theta, this will be equal to e to the power j times 3 pi. So at this stage, we say that pi cosine theta is equal to 3 pi. So it looks like we have no null, okay? So there is no need to search any further. It looks like the only null that we got, it was for n1 and n equal to minus 1, okay? So probably with regard to trying to determine a null, we can say that we don't need to check anything beyond 1. And similarly, uh, a, same, a similar case would be also for n equal to 5, so we can directly say we have no null when n is equal to 5. Okay. So at least we've got two. This is good. So we have an antenna which for the sake of the symmetry, we might get the null uh, right at the top of the construct and right at the very bottom. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, other important uh, elements that we may be interested into is also what is the, the half power beam width in degrees. Find half power of beam width in degrees. And the uh, half power beam width, it can be described using uh, uh, an equation, equation 6.64, this is 1.06. 1.06 divided by the square root of n minus 1. So this is 1.06 divided by square root of 3. So in degrees, we get uh, 0 0.6 degrees. So we get 0 0.6 radians, and 0 0.6 radians is around 34 or 35 uh, degrees. Okay. Uh, 
Another uh, element we can try to to determine is also the the directivity or maximum uh, directivity. So this one we did use in question six point sixty four, and the uh, directivity. This is d zero. This is equal to so whenever we have an array of uh, of several antennas, we have we have some formula which is two uh, n minus two divided by two n minus minus three two uh, n minus three. And uh, we keep multiplying this way until we get here uh, 2 and uh, 1. So in this case, we keep decreasing the, the numbers 1 by 1. And uh, in this case, we have n is equal to 4. 8, so this is 8 minus 2, this is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 divided by uh, Whatever, so we get anything which is smaller than these. This is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So we get all of these uh, elements, uh, numbers canceled out together. But wait a second, well, this is 2n minus 4 minus 3 minus 5. Okay, this is 2n. This is not exactly true. Wait a second. This is 2n minus 4, 2n minus 6 up to 2, and here we get 2n minus 5, 2n minus 7 up to 1. So then this expression will be slightly, of course, very different. So when n is equal to 4, 2n is equal to 8. So this is going to be equal to uh, 6 times 8 minus 4, 4 times 8 minus 2, this is 2. Here we get uh, 2n, 8 minus 3, 5 times 3 times 1. Okay, now it's better. This is 6 times 8, 48 divided by 15. So we get a number which is slightly over over three. So we get a dimensionless uh, value of three point two. And then in uh, decibels, so this is really a pure ratio. And from this pure ratio, we can get uh, uh, a five decibels in the activity. Five. Now we will see an interesting example where uh, we will have to also to analyze whether the, the roots are in the whether the roots are in the visible range or not. This is one thing that we discussed at the beginning of, uh, of this this class. Professor, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, about this equation that you just wrote, it belongs to the binomial arrays, actually. And the question is, how do we know which equation are we going to use? Well, uh, for example, uh, this is yeah, this is something we did in chapter six. Yes. And after that, it is for the Chebyshev uh, array, but the formulas change for Chebyshev. <laughs> Uh, you are you are right, but then uh, yes, 
normally this formula is for bina binomial distribution, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, so now you are right in, in this aspect, uh, Christina. So uh, let me think for a moment. Now, uh, in the binomial expansion, do you remember how the coefficients were designed? Uh, it was with the Pascal time. Yeah, there was this one, which was one, then you do one plus one is two, three. But the coefficients, actually, this example that we just solved, this had coefficients which were one, three, three, one, right? So, okay, so, so we, we see from coefficients that yeah. what formula we're going to use. That is true, yes, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. So, but, but that was a really good question, uh, Christina. You are right. So. Uh, we have a set of equations which uh, which correspond to one type of distribution. Uh, whenever we design the antenna, because when we design the antenna, we can uh, determine the coefficients using two different approaches. And these coefficients, they do converge to their... Uh, so whether we use Chebyshev expansion or whether we use a binomial expansion, these two actually, they do converge. But it is true that using different coefficients, uh, we may need to use different equations regarding the directivity and yeah. So an essential question is also uh, if we have this array factor, is this a binomial expansion? Binomial expansion, which it is actually expansion. Also, the previous one, uh, actually the previous one, it was not a very symmetric one, so we can uh, uh, leave it for now. Yeah. Okay, but thank you for, for your question, Christina. Thanks for for the question. Uh, yeah. Now let's see a different example. Let's assume that uh, we have an uh, array factor which is equal to z squared plus one times z minus 1. Okay. So initially, let's have a look at uh, this array factor. And uh, this looks like being, this is a polynomial of the third order in z. If this is a polynomial of third order in z, the first indication is that uh, most probably the number of antenna elements that we need to consider if we are going to design this type of uh, expansion, this should be uh, should be equal to four. Okay, so expect this type of uh, uh, design. Let's consider also that we have d is going to be equal to lambda divided by a, and uh, beta it's equal to forty five degrees. Okay. Uh, yeah. And then let's try. So if we if we do a more uh, detailed analysis, we may need to uh, to determine the the roots. And by the way, if we want to, so once we have these values, we can try to determine also what is psi. Okay. So then for psi, we can say that this is equal to kd, which is. 2 pi over lambda times lambda, which is lambda over 8, cosine theta, and this cosine theta uh, plus beta, right? This is plus beta, which is pi over 4. Now, at this psi from which, from which we are going to determine the z's, we can cancel these, and we get pi over 4 cosine theta. This is pi over 4 cosine theta plus pi over 4. Now, what is the range, what is the physical range of this, uh, of this psi? Uh, today, in the, at the beginning of the third session, we, we had a look at one uh, distribution, which, uh, so for example, cosine theta, what is the range of cosine theta? It is from minus 1 to plus 1, right? That means that psi, it's a value, it changes from uh, 0 to pi over 2, right? So this is the range of psi, and uh, if we are to draw this one, 
you can see this one also in the uh, in slide. I forget which slide this was, but uh, we can have a look again. Uh, it was among the very few beginning of the base class. This is. We have a slide of slide 21. So this is actually the, the visible range of this, this design we are having right now. So D is equal to lambda over 8, beta is pi over 4, and psi will be equal as it is given here. And we notice that the visible range is something between uh, 0 and uh, pi over 2. But when you say 0 and pi over 2, we see that the progress, the progression, it will be from uh, clockwise, okay? So this is, and uh, let's have a look here. So we are looking now, we have the AF. Uh, and by the way, actually, you know, now we have to find also what are the roots of this AF. So it is a polynomial of, uh, of the third order. So let's try to determine what are these three roots. So this is something that we just wanted to stop presenting. Okay. So if we try to determine the, the roots, we can see that this AF is equal to zero when Z minus J times Z plus J times z minus one, okay? So we get that the, the roots are j, minus j, and one. So the roots are j, minus j, and one. Okay? So now, uh, with these three roots, we can say that uh, one of these j's, in fact, so the visible range, let's not forget, it was this part, moving clockwise. Now, this one, this is even not in the visible range, okay? So, to some degree, we can say that uh, one of the roots, or the roots that we do care, they are, what was this? Z equal to J, let's do this, Z plus J, Z minus J. So the roots here, they are in the VR, because Z, this is J, Z is J, and here Z is equal to 1. So these are in the visible range. Z equal to minus J, this is not in uh, visible range. So. Now that we see that this is not in the, in the visible range, we have, uh, we can even modify slightly the array factor that we are given. So this is something which is uh, something uh, uh, different or odd. But before we even discuss this one, we have to, to consider uh, the antenna row. So it looks like we can have four antennas. Sorry, yes, four antennas. But then, then it looks like uh, the part or the polynomial part of the array factor, it is going to be effectively uh, a polynomial in second order in Z. Okay? So if it will be a, a second order polynomial in Z, then we can say that the, a more precise number in the antenna components that we, we need to, to have in our construct, it is going to be equal to three, okay? So if this is going to be equal to three, then uh, we need to determine the, the new array factor, and the new array factor, it will be, so this polynomial in second order in Z, this is going to be described Z minus Z1, times z minus z2, okay? So if we describe this one like this, we'll have z 
Uh, Z1 is J, so we get here Z minus J times Z minus 1, okay? So Z minus J times Z minus 1, we are going to get, and let's not forget, we want to describe this one as uh, A3 Z squared plus A2 Z to the power 1 plus A3, sorry, A1 times Z to the power 0. So, uh, this is the polynomial, and this is how we are going to extract uh, these, these coefficients. But now, let's see what we get here. This is Z squared, so this is what we should get in the end. Here, we have Z squared. Uh, what is this? What is that? Let's do plus Z. So, how do we get a Z? One Z, we get, if we multiply, actually we get minus here. This is minus 1 minus j. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, plus j. Uh, yeah, I think this is true. So then let's do so times z to the power 0. So is this correct? What do you think? This looks like uh, it is fine. So this is our uh, polynomial, this is what it should be, and then we say that uh, we are going to have three different antenna components, I believe you can see this part, and uh, among these three antenna components, the first component, which corresponds to this a1 z to the power 0, this will be the an, so we are looking for the ans, right? The first one, we can say here a1 is equal to j, Okay. Or a1 is equal to 1, but what is the phase difference? We can say that this is 90 degree phase difference. Now, since we've got a complex number, we can uh, pretend to write uh, the excitation coefficient with respect to some other number. Okay. We can even set this one as 0, we can do this j, and everything we can calculate how much sun you should be in a fuzz with this side that here. Right? So this is the first excitation function, A1. Then A2, it is equal to, what is A2? We say that A2 is equal to minus 1 minus J. So what is minus 1 minus J? Uh, this coefficient, it is equal to, uh, we can call this one as uh, minus square root of 2, okay? Because minus 1 minus j, it's some number around here. The amplitude of this one, it is square root of 2, okay? And we put square root of 2, and the phase difference, it is e to the power j times pi over 4, okay? So, this number, we can also denote this one as, uh, how can I say, let's, uh, let's say this coefficient, yeah, we can, we can denote this one as uh, having an amplitude of minus square root of 2, but the phase difference, now we have to figure out this one. Uh, let's, let's think for a moment. So we have some reference, which is angle 0, a1, it is 1 and it's here. So in phase, it is uh, 90 degree ahead of this reference. So this is A1 equal to 1. Then we have minus square root of 2 times the phase difference of pi over 4. Yes, I mean, this is, is it going to be uh, the phase difference of pi over 4 is going to be here but with an amplitude of minus square root of 2. So in fact, it's going to be this one. So we find this pi over 4. So it looks like this is going to be, how can we think about this one? So this is leading A1 leads, let's consider their reference 0, absolute 0, leads by pi over 2, okay? Then uh, A2, we can say that this one, 
it lags behind by what? By how much is this lagging behind? This is pi over 4, pi over 2, so this is pi 3, pi over 4. Right, prayer disappears ground. This is how much it's lagging behind. But at the same time, the amplitude, it is higher by square root of 2. Okay, so I hope this is clear. So if we are to draw, uh, because what we understand from this phase consideration is that we are going to have some reference, uh, but we, are, we can also do a final drawing regarding this. And finally, we have to determine also what is A3. A3, we get 1. A3 is equal to 1. So we can say that it's, uh, since this has, what is this uh, 1? This is 1 with a phase difference of 0 degree. So we can consider A3 to be the reference. Then we can say here, A1 leads A3. Sorry, I did not write this one before, but I was assuming that. Uh, so actually, A3 is really here. So this is A3. I'm talking this one in the complex plane. So this is uh, imaginary part of Z. This is real part of Z. So we know how the complex plane is. We say that A2 lags behind A3. Let's do it like this. Leads A3 by pi over 2. Right? Lags behind A3 by 3 pi over 4. Okay? So, uh, given this, this information that we just uh, received, uh, so let's not forget that it took some steps for us to figure out how uh, everything would play out. But then uh, we can consider the following. So A3, it can be, since we can move in time, we know that cosinus and versinus cotachos baklavon. So let's start with uh, assuming that A3 it is a cosine expression. So this is, let's say, this is A3. A1 leads A3 by pi over 2. That's good. So if it leads by pi over 2, that means that this will be shifted this way. And then right here, we get, we're going to get this. Here, here, and here. So this is A3. I wish I had a different color, but this is A1, okay, which is. Uh, yeah, I should have drawn a little lower in a way, by mistake. Or I can correct my mistake by, by drawing like this uh, A1. It starts here, 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 and here. Then this means that this A1, we can clear maybe this way. It's your choice which one you choose, which one you think is better. But in order to compare that uh, A1 is leading A3, is that you can compare this front. When you calculate the phase, we don't compare how much different there are the zeros. Okay? We compare a zero with, a, with an increasing order, or a zero with a decreasing order. So we try, so this is a shoulder, which is going to look like this. Okay? And uh, here, we can see that this one in A1, now we draw here A1 here, this is really earlier than A3. So this is how we consider this one. And then uh, we have also A1, A3, this is A2. How are we going to draw A2? And by the way, the amplitude here, this is 1. This is also, uh, let's draw it here, this is also 1. A2, it lags behind by 3 pi over 4, okay? So if it lags behind, let's uh, let's draw this here. Let's have this earth as lines. And uh, this whole thing, it is 2 pi, right? So when you say this whole thing is 2 pi, this is 2 pi. This is pi, this is pi over 2. And now, the, we're going to do the reference with respect to A3. A2 is going to let behind by 3 pi over 4. Where is 3 pi over 4? This is pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. So if this is going to be the reference, let's assume here we have some uh, square root of 2. 
but it is, uh, let, let me think for a moment, I'm getting a little confused. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, we're, I'm not getting confused, it's fine. So this is laying behind the 3 pi over 4, that means that uh, who can help me here? Right here. Uh, pi over 2, so h to the maximum right here. So this maxima here is delayed this much because right here it is 3 pi over 4. Okay, so this is uh, it's going to be this one. That's good. We add a pi over 2. Pi over 2 from here is this much. So here we go. Then another pi over 2, we come here, then we get here. And uh, we move another pi over 2 this way. Okay, so fine, we got it. This is A2. And now I also I can also add some other aspect here. So this is how uh, these. So it looks like if we are going to feed, if you use an oscilloscope to measure the the voltage, which is applied to the first uh, arterial component, we are going to measure this one. If we put the second channel in the oscilloscope in here, uh, A1 and A3, this is how they are going to look like, same amplitudes, and A3 and A2, this is how they are going to look like. So, so they are going to be shifted by their respective values. One thing that I can also add, which I believe it might also be uh, obvious to some degree, is the fact that here we are drawing this one, A2, is e to the power j pi 4. What this corresponds to, this corresponds to a plus uh, 45, plus 45 degrees with respect to this, right? But the minus sign, this includes uh, minus 180 degrees, or plus 180, actually, because uh, from this point to this, it's so this angle, we can call this one pi plus pi over 4, but it's not nice. Uh, we would rather call this angle as minus 3 pi over 4, okay? And by the way, if we have a look again here, this is in fact equal to, this is equal to square root of 2, and the phase angle, it is pi over 4, plus plus the phase grad, plus 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 the phase grad, you say minus, but minus chinatadir, minus chinatadir grad. Thank you, Pastai, as the brother bar, the language that you should, Okay. Uh, yeah. So this is how uh, we can excite these uh, three components, which, as I said before, we were expecting for four. We ended up with three for reasons that uh, we tried to explain. Uh, okay. We found the excitation coefficients, and then uh, the next step would be where we can get the nulls. So where are the possible nulls? In order to determine the, the possible nulls, uh, let's see where we can find a good place on the board to, to show this. Let's see if we can fit it in here. And uh, the nulls, uh, they should be equal whenever the let me think for a moment. So the first root is J, and the so let's think for the first root. So we care about the first root J because this will make zero this polynomial, and uh, we said this J, and this is equal to J e to the power. Uh, J times psi. Okay. 
So this is pi over 4 cosine theta plus pi over 4. This is the whole thing is equal to e to the power j pi over 2. Okay, e to the power j pi over 2. So sometimes this gets a little confusing, but you should not. We know that uh, this whole thing, this is psi, right? So this is something that is changing. Now, we want this to be equal to j, because this is going to make zero this polynomial. And let's not forget again, allow me to actually, it's written, okay, so here it is. So this is the psi. And we should not forget that z is equal to e to the power j psi, right? So this whole thing, uh, is equal to this expression. By the way, this should be, what should it be? Yeah, this should be like this. Then we get pi over 4 times cosine theta plus pi over 4. This is equal to pi over 2. So what we can do here, we can cancel out the pi's everywhere. We can multiply by 4 everywhere. 4, 4, 4, 4, times 4, we get 2. So from this expression, we get cosine theta plus 1, this is equal to 2. You can check if this is true, which became a little confusing, but uh, it should not. So the 4 cancel out, 4 cancel out, here 4 with 2, we are left with 2. So this means that cosine theta is equal to 1. Cosine theta is equal to 1, and cosine theta is equal to 1 only at uh, theta equal to 0. So so we get a null. So one of the nulls, it is equal when angle is equal to theta is zero. So in this construct that we draw here, so let's assume this is the three antennas, we're going to get a null right here. So if we are to draw this one, we can draw it like this. Okay? Or like this. It's a null, because if we put a receiving antenna right here, we're gonna measure no signal. Okay? And uh, that's good. So we try to solve this one uh, in this small space. And uh, we can also try to check for the other root. The other root, it has, uh, what was the other root? It was z equal to 1, right? And z is equal to 1 at this value. We have e to the power j times pi over 4 cosine theta plus pi over 4. This whole thing, this should be equal to 1. But when is that 1 equal to 1? That one, it can be equal to one whenever the angle is zero, right? So if we think about the complex plane, when is this one? This one, it is when we have e to the power j times zero, or e to the power j times two pi, okay? So it can be either one uh, of these. So let's see which one works better for us. So let's do this one. Let's say this is e to the power j times zero. And then we get pi over 4 cosine theta plus pi over 4. This is going to be equal to 0. So if this is equal to 0, then we get that cosine theta is equal to minus 1. We get here cosine theta is equal to minus, minus 1. If cosine theta is equal to minus 1, then theta is equal to 180 degrees. So it looks like uh, another null for this specific antenna, it can be found right here at the bottom. Because the angle theta, so this is the three antenna components, 1, 2, 3, with these three coefficients a1, a2, and a3, and we're going to get uh, a zero, we're going to receive nothing if we put the receiving antenna here, and another receiving loop antenna at the bottom. So it looks like we found uh, two uh, nodes. Is it clear? Do you have any question? Uh, yeah.
Now, we're going to start another example, but we're not going to solve uh, all of it. We just want to, we're just going to point some important aspect. I'll leave this one for the moment here. And uh, because we had this discussion with, uh, with Christina, with you, that you said that uh, the, the formulas that we use, they would greatly, they would strongly depend on the type of the binomial on the type of the expansion that we're going to, to use. So far, we solved one example with AF, which looked like this. We solved another example where AF, it looked like this. The last example is when AF, is, it looks like this. Now, let's consider another array factor in Z, which uh, can be described, let me think for a moment, this is as uh, AF Z plus one, to the power 4. Now, if this is z plus 1 to the power 4, we can, uh, all we need to do is that we need to find the, the polynomial. Now, it looks like the highest power, this is equal to, this is a polynomial in fourth order of z, and uh, this is equal to z plus 1 squared times z plus 1 squared. So we need some work on this one. It looks like the first polynomial is going to produce z squared plus 2z plus 1 times z squared plus 2z plus 1. And uh, we like to work out. And uh, we notice that uh, a1 times z to the power 4 plus we have also, so this is uh, a5 times z to the power 0, okay? We have not written what is a2 and uh, let's do it like this. So we have here a2, wait a second. Is this how we do this? Uh, I, I, can you correct me here? So a1, it was the lowest order, right? So apparently, can you check this one? It looks like this is wrong. Not wrong, but we could always uh, choose a conversion. So this can be a1 z to the power 0, and this can be a5 times z to the power 4. Then, uh, if this is a1, this, this would be a2 z to the power 1 plus a3 z to the power. What are we doing here? Can you help me here? Uh, z to the power 2 plus a4 z to the power 3, and a1 to z to the power 4. And really, okay, so we got everything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's good. And by the way, uh, it looks like so far, we don't know what these numbers will come out, but it looks like uh, a5 is equal to 1, and a1 is equal to 1. Now, based on, sim on this symmetry, it looks like the expansion is, it is a binomial expansion. So, if this antenna array, which has this uh, array factor, as given in here, uh, based on the symmetry, which we have this, uh, this triangle symmetry where we, where we get the coefficients from, uh, most probably this is a binomial expansion. So, if we are to use the half power uh, HP BW beam width, we are going to use the equations which uh, belong to the binomial expansion or to the mathematical apparatus uh, associated with the binomial expansion representation of the antenna arrays. Okay, so let's have a look now regarding the, the other powers. I could immediately see that the z to the power 4 coefficient is 1. And uh, we could also notice that z to the power 0, it is also 1. So these two, if these two are 1 and 1, most probably this is going to be the, what we call the binomial expression. And uh, because there is a symmetry of these terms that we observe here. And by the way, the other coefficients, they are going to look like this. So this is uh, 1, 1, and a2, and uh, uh, a2 and a3. So actually, all the coefficients will be like this: one, four, 
six four one. Okay. So this is the one one are here. Z to the power one and Z to the power three, and these are four. Uh, let's do it like this. A five is one, so this is Z to the power four plus uh, four Z to the power three plus six Z squared plus four Z to the power one plus one Z to the power zero. Let's go. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is the antenna again. Uh, at least we know that this is a binomial expansion. It, uh, but then we can try again to find the nulls. If we try to find the nulls, let's use uh, uh, wavelength d three delta over four. So we can see, we can see much in here. So let's use d equal to three delta over four. If we use this one, then we have KD is equal to 2 pi over lambda times 3 lambda over 4. And this is going to be equal to 3 pi over 2, right? 3 pi over 2. This is KD cosine theta, beta, etc. Now, let's see, uh, let's assume that uh, beta is equal to 0. If beta is equal to 0, which part of the board can we sacrifice first? Uh, well, let's take this out. And, uh, so then, in order to find the nulls, we have kd cosine theta. Let's consider also theta equal to zero. If beta is equal to zero, we are going to have that uh, e to the power j times psi, which psi is 3 uh, pi over 2 cosine theta. This is going to be equal to the root. So what is the root of this equation, or at least... Uh, so the root here, this is minus 1. So this whole thing is minus 1, which means that this is equal to e to the power j times uh, pi. At the same time, this is e to the power j times minus pi. So we have two possible options to determine the, the null the nulls. And uh, the first option is, actually this can also be e to the power j times 3 pi, and also e to the power j times minus 3 pi, right? So we can consider all of these uh, possible cases, but uh, let's find for when, uh, when this is pi initially. So here, the first equality we can construct is 3 pi over 2 cosine theta is equal to pi. And then from here, we have that uh, cosine theta is equal to 2 over 3, right? So this is something that uh, it is almost obvious. So from here, the pi is cancelled out, and the cosine theta is equal to 2 over 3. This is one possible version. The other version is cosine theta, theta it's going to be cosine theta. It is equal to minus 2 over 3. So then theta is equal to uh, cosine inverse of the of two over three. Okay, so we found the null for this uh, specific antenna, and uh, again, uh, we can also uh, learn from here that the, if this is a polynomial in the fourth order, then the number of elements is going to be equal to 5, and then if we have to find the half power beam width, we will have the equations which put the 2n minus 2 and divided by 2n minus 3, right? Like 2n minus 2 times 2n minus 4 and so on. And here we have 2n minus 3 times 2n minus 5 
we are here by two and we are here we end here by one. So if we substitute these equations also on the on this expression, we can find initially the the half power beam width in a radians, because whenever we have a ratio, this would be a radians, and those radians we would have to convert those into degrees. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do you have any question? If you don't have a question, we can. No. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Stop recording.